Hi guys, welcome back for another fantastic recipe. So, um, this week, well, first of all, welcome to my channel. My name is Natalka and you have found Cooking with Natalka. So today, let's get into it. Today, I am going to be making sugar-free uh, cream puffs. So this is exciting. I have never made uh, shoe pastry before, so this will be a first for me. I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but I'm really looking forward to this. And it's another video for my dad because he is sugar free. So this is something he'll be able to enjoy and you can feel not guilty eating them all because there's no sugar in them. So let's get to it and start baking and I'll show you guys how to make some cream puffs. All right, so first thing we need to do is get the shoe pastry made. So in a pot on your stove over a medium high heat, you're gonna bring one cup of water and a half a cup of salted butter to a boil. If you don't have salted butter and you're using unsalted, then you're gonna need to add probably about a half a teaspoon of salt to this. So let your butter melt into your water, stir it a couple times and bring it to a boil. Now that my water and butter are boiling, I'm gonna turn it down to a very low heat, like very, very low, almost off, okay? So give your water and butter a little stir and you're gonna start mixing in one cup of flour and just slowly mix it in because it is gonna look very lumpy and almost like it's curdling, but it's not. It's just gonna look really lumpy. So just keep mixing it in slowly. Uh, you may even have to turn your heat off of your, your stove, but um, this, is, this is a tedious process. So stir, stir, stir some more, keep stirring, keep scraping the edges of your pot, and eventually it's gonna make a dough, a very, very sticky, lumpy dough. <laughs> and it'll pull away from the sides of your pot. It'll start, uh, pulling away from the bottom of your pot as well. Once it reaches that texture, you're going to completely remove it from the stove, put it somewhere to, to cool a little bit. So take a trivet, put your pot on it, and you're going to keep stirring it and keep working the dough just to help cool it down a little bit. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, we're going to add four eggs, but you're going to add one at a time because it is still hot. You don't want it to curdle or cook. So when you add that first egg, mix it and mix it and keep mixing it and don't stop until it is all incorporated. Then you're gonna add the next egg and you're gonna do this for all four eggs and just keep mixing it until it is incorporated. As you are mixing them in, it is gonna look curdled and cooked. I was very skeptical while I was doing this because I, I've never made it, so I have no idea what the textures are supposed to be, what it's going to look like. I did my research. I understood that you just have to keep mixing it and it'll completely change from this um, sort of lumpy and curdled look into a smooth, velvety um, dough. And so you have to trust the process. You also have to know that while you're mixing it, your arm is probably gonna wanna fall off. Mine was burning by the end of mixing all these eggs in. My arm, my wrist, my hand from holding the spoon. Um, it, it's not a process you can use a hand mixer with. You have to do it by hand. You get a better feel for it. It'll turn out beautifully. Just trust it. Give your arm that good workout by mixing all four of those eggs into your dough. After all of that mixing, you can see in my pot that the pastry dough is so smooth and it's velvety, turned out beautifully. So now I'm gonna take a piping bag with just a round tip on it, a large round tip, and I'm gonna put all my pastry dough into my piping bag. I also have a very, very large baking sheet lined with some parchment paper. Use whatever baking sheet you want. And I am gonna fill this baking sheet with mounds of pastry dough. And they are gonna look so darn cute. <laughs> so 
while I'm doing this, I'm also preheating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I will get as many mounds onto this one baking sheet as I can. If not, I will just go get a separate pan and put a few more on that pan. So while you're piping them on, pipe them as close together as you can because they won't uh, spread, they puff up. They will puff out just a little bit, but you should be able to cram on so many onto one sheet. So give it a try. Um, Fill up your sheet, preheat your oven. Next, I'm going to take a small bowl of water and just smooth out the top of each of my little mounds of pastry dough because as I pipe them, they left a peak. Uh, now, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to recommend it because it'll make them look a little nicer and they'll be all smoothed out on top and you won't have this like little peak sticking out that will probably burn. <laughs> my cream puffs or my puffs there's no cream in them yet look amazing they also smell amazing so these have been baking for 35 minutes and they are just a very light golden brown on top just the way they should be next i'm gonna take a very sharp knife and poke a hole in every single one so one this is venting out the air and two, it's going to be easier to do this now than later so that they're ready to be filled once they've completely cooled. After I poke holes into all of these puffs, I'm going to put them back into the oven. The oven is turned off, but I'm going to put them back in and I'm going to open up the door and leave the door open just a little bit. And that is so that they can kind of dry out is what you're doing. You're drying them out. And they're gonna come down and cool slowly with the oven temperature. So they still kind of bake, but they're cooling at the same time. Not sure how this all works, but it works. So poke a hole into all of your puffs, put them back into your oven that is turned off, leave the, the oven door slightly open and just leave them in there until they have completely cooled. All right, ready to make the cream filling. So two cups of heavy whipping cream into your mixer bowl. Then you can add whatever flavoring you want. I'm adding just a splash of vanilla, but I'm also gonna add a splash of maple bourbon uh, sugar-free syrup, the kind of syrups that you would put into um, your coffee. So I'm using this thin maple bourbon sugar-free syrup. I'm gonna put it on my mixer and let it start whipping. While my whipped cream is whipping, I am gonna add two tablespoons of my sugar replacement for icing sugar. I am using Swerve Icing Sugar, which is a zero calorie sweetener. I'm not sponsored by it or anything, just I really love the Swerve brand. So I'm using two tablespoons of that. Then I'm also gonna add two tablespoons of sugar-free instant vanilla pudding mix. Now, I'm adding the pudding mix because it is a stabilizer and it'll keep the whipped cream from melting. Awesome, I know, I know. I have just learned this recently and I absolutely love this trick. And it adds a little bit more vanilla flavoring. So once you've added all of that, you're gonna let it whip and I am gonna whip it on high and the texture is gonna change and it'll almost seem like it's curdling a little bit or like turning to butter, but let it mix, okay? I've also added just a hint more of the maple bourbon flavoring after I tasted it. I felt like it needed just a little bit more. All right, so this has only been mixing for maybe two minutes. I am watching it very, very, very carefully because I do not want it to turn to butter. So after it mixes, and I think it's at a texture I like, I'm gonna remove it from my mixer, you know, clean off my whisk attachment, take it off the mixer stand, scrape down the size of the bowl, and ta-da, it looks like icing, like buttercream icing, only better. It's amazing. All right, so that piping bag and the piping tip that you use to make the puffs, you're gonna use that same one and you're gonna fill it with your cream. 
and you're gonna take that cream and you're gonna pipe it into each of your cream puffs. Um, right now, I'm only gonna do half of them just to show you guys. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of chocolate, preferably sugar-free if you have it, and I'm gonna melt it down with just a tiny bit of coconut oil. And I'm gonna take it and drizzle it over top of each of the cream puffs because why not? They're gonna look so nice. And the chocolate will just add that little bit extra to it. Now, of course, you want it to be sugar-free so that you can maintain the sugar-free um, dessert. But unfortunately, I do not have sugar-free chocolate chips right now. So I'm only using a little bit of them just for decoration and just for picture purposes. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys. It is so muggy here today and I am, I'm dying in this kitchen. It's so warm. So let me tell you. These cream puffs turned out perfect, perfect and amazing. And I mean, look at them. They are so damn cute. And my husband has already eaten like 10 of them. And because I told them, told him they were sugar free, he feels no guilt whatsoever eating like 10 of these. Um, so not completely true. Okay. There is a little bit of sugar and it is only because I have not been able to find zero sugar chocolate chips yet. And when I used to live in the US, I would go out to whatever grocery store and get the Hershey's milk chocolate chips that were zero sugar. And then I would use those. And then yeah, the whole recipe is completely sugar free. But I don't have any. And I only used about a quarter cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And that was just to do like a little drizzle on this which is super cute. And then the leftover that I had, I mixed it into the whipped cream that's in one of them. So those two aren't really sugar-free, but this one is. This one that has just the plain cream in it. I can't really say it's plain cream. It is a um, maple bourbon cream inside because I use the sugar-free maple bourbon syrup in it just give it a little flavor but it turned out so good and i am so impressed with the shoe pastry i've never made it before and i love it now i know the recipe was like don't swirl it like you would on top of a cupcake i did swirl it and i loved it it made it look like cute little beehives <laughs> so whatever do it however you want make them into eclairs if you want but it is amazing and it filled beautifully. Can you see it? Kind of. Mm. Oh my God, it's so good. And the chocolate part, if you really wanted, instead of adding the vanilla pudding to the whipped cream to stabilize it, you can add chocolate pudding. Again, sugar free chocolate pudding to keep it all sugar free. And it would do the same thing. It would stabilize the whipped cream but it would give it that chocolate taste as well so wow i love this recipe i love that it's sugar free because i feel healthier eating it even though i know i'm not really healthier but it was for my dad my mom can make these for him and he can feel zero guilt eating them so that is fantastic i love it i must admit you know, I'm not sponsored or anything like that, but Swerve, I love using Swerve. Um, it's the closest thing that tastes like sugar, but it's a substitute, and I love it. I used it for quite a few years now, and I don't notice much of a difference when I swap out that for, when I swap real sugar and that, you know, anyway. It's a fantastic replacement. I like it. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. Um, check out all my links. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and helping me grow my channel. I know I've been a little bit slow with posting new videos. I've been a little busy with house renovations, balancing work, uh, summer in general. <laughs> Um, my dog, poor Max, was sick for a month and that took a toll on us. Everything is good. So now I'm going to 
get back into a good routine and make sure I'm getting these videos posted every week again. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see whatever recipe I make next.